super excited um, to see you all here. Happy May Day. I can hardly believe it is May. Um, and really excited to discuss the results of our 2023 Community Scan report with you all. Um, and also just acknowledging that I know this is a really busy time of year too. So thank you for taking a moment. Maybe some of you are eating lunch uh, while you're with us today, but good to see you here. Um, for those of you just joining, if you want to drop your name and institution in the chat, um, go ahead and do so to say hello. Um, and we'll kind of get started. So as we have shared in the Google group and in some of our communications throughout the whole community scan process, the scan itself is, um, and the survey is an important part of the work that we do as it's our big opportunity for us to check in with you all and learn more about the challenges that you're facing hear kind of what your needs are and the ways in which that we as an organization can best serve you. So we'll dive deeper into that later on. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to drop the community scan report into the chat in case anyone wants to pull that up and look at it as we move through. Um, and just to let you know that the 2023 report, as well as the um, 2019 and 2021 community scan reports can also be found uh, on the community hub under the community news tab. So I'm gonna drop that community hub link into the chat as well. All right, so to begin today, we want you to have an opportunity to connect with some of your fellow community members and OEN team. So given that it's a Monday, we're here to talk about the community instead of me just jumping right in and talking at you all uh, to kind of warm us up for the conversation. We're going to take the first five minutes to separate into small groups. We're kind of we're not that big of a group here, but I'll try to get like three people in each breakout room um, and uh just say hello to others who are here yourselves and i'm going to drop the question in the chat but um since we're nearing the end of the semester for the next couple minutes if you want to just say hello introduce yourself your name uh where you're coming from today and um share one word that you would use to describe this past academic year and why you chose that word so say hello to everybody, and then we'll come back here and get started with um, the rest of the things that we're seeing on the slide here today. Um, and this is fun. I'm going to say, let's do four breakout rooms. Here we go. We'll just wait till everybody comes back. It looks like one of the other rooms is still going strong. Sixteen seconds. It says it'll close them. Hopefully, you all got enough time, and I didn't fully interrupt and make you leave earlier than <laughs> needed. All right, welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you either had a chance to meet someone new or maybe also see some familiar faces in your breakout room. Um, I think if I had to choose a word, I'd say flash is this. I feel like this year flew by a little quicker than others. Um, all right. Well, um, thank you for connecting. As you can see here, we've got a little bit of an agenda set out for today. Um, we are going to just take a little step back and talk about why the community scan is a key part of what we do here at the OEN and then review kind of walk through the report itself and what we heard from you all. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the session we're recording this part um, kind of through the report summary and then I will stop the recording uh, for the discussion time so that hopefully that's a place where you all feel comfortable and welcome to share openly and that's going to be for the discussion a time to ask any questions share reflections or any more feedback that you have on what was shared today. Um, and if any questions kind of bubble up as we go, you can definitely send them in via the chat and I'll try to refer back to those during the discussion time. So with that, let's get started. 
So as a community, we talk about this a lot. We know that our collective knowledge exists in abundance and we're all committed to using the abundance for the benefit of everybody else in our community. And as an organization, um, our guiding principles, which one of them is that shared abundance, along with our community's feedback are really kind of our North Star in determining the actions we take and what kind of services, programs, professional development um, that we put together to support you and your work. So I'm just going to drop in case anyone does want to check out our guiding principles or review those. I'm dropping those in the chat. Um, and I think, you know, not only are we guided by your feedback and our guiding principles, but um, kind of most importantly, given especially what we've experienced the past few years, we are a human focused organization and we're not just you know, higher ed employees or consumers of the services or the professional development sessions. We're all colleagues in our community and people who are also here for connecting with each other and supporting one another. So um, really the community scan is a tool that allows us to gather that input to kind of take your temperature, learn what your needs are in terms of, um, you know, feeling that connection, feeling empowered and supported in your work and then it kind of helps us take that information and structure it into actionable next steps which we'll kind of go over at the end so since you all are likely the ones that completed the survey i know sharing the results of the report are kind of preaching to the choir in a sense but we're hoping that today is an opportunity for you to learn and kind of hear what others in the community are facing perhaps feel a bit of solidarity and the fact that we're all in this together and see how we as an organization are taking your feedback really to heart and what we're doing in response to that. So um, just know that we do encourage your engagement during today's discussion, but really throughout the year uh, and beyond today, feel free to always share any thoughts you might have with, with me or any of our other team members who are here today. All right, so to dig in now to the report itself, um, as you probably saw in your inboxes, thank you for um, tolerating all of the emails that I sent to you about completing the community scan survey. Those went out to the Google group inviting our community members to participate um, in the survey itself. And our main goal is to surpass the 84 responses that we received in 2021. And I am happy to report, we have our trophy here. Uh, on this slide that we successfully beat our res past response record coming in with 100 total responses this year. Of those that responded, um, we had 83 institutions represented across our membership and 12 consortia. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you if you responded to the survey. Um, I was really excited because not only did that 83 and the consortia in include a wide variety of institution types, but we also had respondents spanning our membership um, from institutions in the US, Canada, Australia, and the UK, which is a good segue into our next slide that has a map on it. Um, this is kind of a visual of who we are as the larger community. Our member map um, shows everybody that's a part of the OEN on here. Um, and we were really excited. We've said this a couple of times, but we were really excited that this year our first UK member, the University of Sheffield, joined us. So just for some numbers related to um, where we're at to kind of ground us um, in terms of where we are now versus when we did the community scan last in 2021, our membership has continued to increase since the 2021 scan as has the number of books in the Open Textbook Library, which has surpassed a thousand since we last did the scan. So um, just wanted to shout out that that's directly due to your efforts and major kudos to those of you who have submitted books to the OEL, OTL. So we've grown as a community um, and kind of with that, we'll start to go into the responses that we received beginning with our community word cloud. Um, as you may remember, one of the questions that was on the community scan survey was what are three words that you would use to describe the OEN community? And um, you can see there's some really beautiful words on here that you all submitted. I'd be interested in the chat if there are any that stand out to, to anybody, feel free to send those in. Um, and the cool part I think that we've talked about as a team is that what we're seeing in the word cloud 
also mirrors what we hope uh, to show up as for our community. So that's really um, validating and, and exciting to see on our end. Um, we did do this word cloud kind of exercise in 2019 and 2021 as well. Um, and in both of those years, um, two of the main words were also helpful and supportive. So great to see that that has continued and is consistent. Um, there were some individual words in the scan that we've really taken into account, especially reflecting on how we've changed and how we orient members to our community and our offerings since kind of pivoting to virtual through the pandemic. Um, and there were a few, a handful of words, distant, remote, a little unclear, underutilized, overworked. And I like this one, stubborn. To me, that could sometimes even be a good thing. Um, and we really, you know, it was a, the vast majority of responses were these awesome positive words, but those ones have really helped us clarify um, some of the work that we want to do, especially with OEN Engage, our summer event that we'll talk about later. Um, additional words that I love and our team has kind of enjoyed that you can't necessarily see very well on the word cloud um, are words like chatty. Uh, united, persistent, just, inclusive, vibrant, empowering, safe, approachable, diverse, flexible, and responsive. And again, those are all just hearing those words from you mean so much to us. And I'd be interested to hear during the discussion if this is also in line with how you, you view the OEN in our community. Okay, so one of the most important questions on the scan was when we asked, what are the key challenges that you face in advancing your open education initiatives? And of um, all of the responses that we received, there were definitely kind of these five were the top most common responses, responses with that number one far and away, you know, it's written on here, literally by far the most common response and challenge was that um, just kind of this lack of time, energy, capacity, funding, and resources. Um, and that one was something that we also heard in 2021, but it was the number of responses uh, that came through with that was far greater in this 2023 scan than in 21. Um, other challenges that were the same as the last time we did the community scan were this um, scaling and sustainability of open education programs, and also faculty resistance and competing priorities, though this year mention of faculty burnout was much more prominent than in 2021. And then um, two challenges that were identified in this community scan that weren't before were the lack of support from institutional leadership and legislators, which um, was interesting also because that lack of support from legislators, legislators, was mentioned by US and Canadian institutions. And then lack of relevant OER and ancillary materials, which I also thought was interesting because um, whereas in past scans, it's kind of been, how do we get faculty on board? That faculty resistance was more the focus of the challenge. Whereas this time around, there were a lot of comments saying like, hey, we've got faculty that really wanna be uh, using OER, but they just aren't finding the right materials for their courses. Um, or ancillary materials that they need. So um, just little nuanced differences in, in some of the submissions. So I would imagine that some of you are probably facing many of these challenges um, and the fact that they persist across our, our membership poses a really great question for us as a community as to how we can creatively tackle them and continue to, to innovate in these spaces, which we'll kind of see over the next couple slides. All right, so in addition to asking, you know, what challenges are you facing? The exciting part is the follow-up question, I think, on our end. It's really cool to hear from you. We asked, what do you wish the OEN offered to help you address these challenges? And the creativity was through the roof. So again, thank you all for your submissions. Um, in, in terms of this challenge around lack of time, energy, capacity, resources, uh, there are a number of great ideas as to how we can address that. Um, to summarize, there were a lot of responses around how it would be really helpful to connect you all to one another, right? Like you're all doing this great work and really leaning on each other, which is kind of great because that's the hallmark of our community in general. 
Um, there were a lot specifically of comments um, on how to connect one another to feel like re-energized uh, with especially smaller institutions or those ha that have um, smaller open education programs at their institution to learn from one another on how, how they're managing that. Uh, lowering time commitments uh, by keeping any professional development offerings that we do at the OEN to more bite-sized pieces with lower commitment. That would be helpful given that time is, is scarce. There were also a number of responses relating to how we can help alleviate some of your workload by offering things like plug and play resources, toolkits, and um, kind of prepackaged outreach materials or by um, having our different campuses and members share expertise um, through a speaker swap. I thought that was a really creative idea because uh, it's been mentioned um, many times that sometimes when you have an expert coming from outside of your campus community, people really tune in in a different way than, than if it's someone that they're familiar with. Um, let's see here. There uh, was one specific call out for sharing best practices, um, or not one specific, but like a lot of responses around sharing best practices for identifying OER use on campus, and then also how to use the data dashboard to keep that information up to date. And then finally, we heard that members would like help in finding and applying for grant funding, which makes a ton of sense given that um, funding can be stretched so thin. When it comes to lack of support from leadership, some ideas that you shared involved creating trainings and webinars, engaging that particular audience, and um, really also great ideas around how we at the OEN as an organization can leverage our positionality to gain the attention of um, leaders about open education. And that kind of goes along with that outside voices being more impactful thing that, that a lot of you mentioned. And then um, there was also a lot of great energy around putting together sort of somehow connecting leaders with uh, those at similar organizations or putting together lists of similar sized uh, institutions or types of institutions who are prioritizing OER on their campuses as a way to kind of inspire leadership to keep up with the Joneses, as it were, and their peer institutions. And then another great idea was having the OEN collaborate with other open education advocacy organizations on all of these efforts and in, in reaching that audience. All right, for scaling and sustainability, I know this is always a challenge. Some of the great ideas that we heard were um, kind of, a lot of them revolved around renewed interest in hosting events for members to share best practices related to scaling and sustainability. Um, there was some ideas on, on an event to kind of balance expectations of growing open ed programs and keeping that momentum going when you just have such limited uh, capacity. Um, and then also sharing staffing models for open ed programs and seeing how others are um, sharing those workloads in their institutions as ideas for how others can, can best do that. Um, there were also a number of folks who commented on research ideas that were was interesting because we didn't ask about research ideas. So I thought it was cool to see that pop up in the scan, which I we didn't see in past community scans either. Um, research ideas to help address knowledge gaps and expand knowledge at the, in the field that can be of help to others doing the work. And again, we saw comments about the OEN putting together outreach materials that members can um, share out locally to engage campus partners, students, um, and even parents were mentioned in terms of just broadening the engagement on your campus for sustainability reasons. All right, and then for this challenge of faculty burnout, um, faculty resistance, competing priorities, there were a lot of comments about facilitating spaces or offering training on how to facilitate spaces for disciplinary collaboration between faculty, which along those lines, I would like to give a little shout out for the Open Pedagogy Learning Circle Training Workshop that we're hosting next Tuesday, May 9th from 2 to 3 p.m. Central. 
uh, Tanya, I believe, shared that out in the Google group uh, a little while ago. And you can find the link for that event on the events calendar of the Community Hub. So exciting to share that we are, we do have something coming up very soon along those lines. Uh, another idea was collecting open textbook library usage data to inform faculty of what others um, have adopted for similar courses or um, course content. And then another idea was for the OEN, you know, we do a lot of professional development aimed at those building out open education initiatives on their campus, like you all, um, but for us to host more professional development opportunities for faculty themselves, including um, perhaps community-wide faculty workshops that we host rather than um, our members or in addition to our members hosting them locally on campus. Thank you, Tanya. I see she just posted uh, the Zoom link and information on that event next week in the chat. All right, and for the final challenge of um, the lack of relevant OER and ancillary materials, uh, last but certainly not least, there were a lot of ideas on how to address this as well. Um, and I'm excited to share that we are working on um, this first point, creating an OER publishing tool. Uh, and we've got another event coming up in May that Karen shared out via the Google group recently, the Open Textbook Planner and Katita Pilot Demo um, happening on Wednesday, May 17th from 12 to 1 p.m. Central, which uh, also on the Community Hub calendar, that event is linked. Um, so that's happening. Definitely join us for that if you can. Um, another idea was to expand professional development opportunities. We do a lot of really great stuff with publishing, but people made comments about um, doing some more formatting focused production element, professional development, um, you know, more professional development around interactive elements. Um, for open educational resources or focusing on remixing or adapting rather than creating an entire um, open textbook. And I wanna give a shout out to Ariana Santiago, who is here today, um, who hosted a session for us at last year's OEN Summit on modifying and creating OER. So just wanted to say exactly, Abby, woo, Ariana. Um, so clearly that's a need and, and we, this is a great example of how we've got experts right here in the community who not only have really great ideas, but um, expertise and are more than willing to share that out with everybody else. Um, another idea was facilitating collaborative publishing projects among members of our community. And then there was one idea um, that came up a couple of times, creating a login only repository of ancillary materials for the open textbook library which I do want to mention um, that we there's currently a way to submit ancillary materials for an open textbook in the OTL, um, though this is really great feedback also on how we can expand upon that or maybe help with some search filters related to ancillary materials on the OTL page. All right, so as you can see, we got a ton of feedback. It was awesome. You all are so creative. And really, this is just a snapshot of like kind of the recurring themes, but there's a lot in there uh, that we received from you all. So again, I, I'm going to keep saying thank you. We really can't say that enough. Um, and it was really cool inspiration in terms of planning, you know, internally for our team, how to best integrate your ideas into our work. We had an in-person meeting in Minnesota in March, where we went over the whole community scan results and it kind of teed us up for our time together. Um, so again, we were really using this and it was really inspiring. Uh, so on this slide, we've got the next steps that we plan to put in motion in the coming months based on your feedback. And you, I'm going to start with this first one, which is OEN Engage. You might have seen Dave's announcement in the Google group last week about our upcoming OEN Engage event which is going to be happening the week of July 10th. So mark your calendars. And really what it is, is based on the input we heard in the scan in other focus groups we've held with some of our consortial leaders, um, just anecdotal conversations we've had with our members. This is what we've created to be kind of the next iteration of our former OEN Summit and Institute. Um, and this one's really going to focus on some of the points that are outlined here. Um, connecting our members, you all, to one another, and also to the programs, tools, and opportunities that you've got available to you 
as members of our community. Um, and it'll also include our new open pedagogy train the trainer workshop, which is something that we're working on at the moment. Um, and we'll be sharing more detailed information about that in the coming weeks. So again, kind of a little taste, but stay tuned. Um, again, we used your feedback really to create what that looks like. Um, along those lines, and definitely not to lose space uh, for you all to share the great work that you're doing in terms of events. Um, we are going to do uh, a little revival of what we've hosted in the past community conversation events on a number of different topics that you um, identified in your survey responses that would be of interest to you that we aren't already hitting with some of our other events like Tea Time. Um, and so those are coming back, which I was really excited to hear that. We did ask a question about people's interest in virtual events because we had heard so much. We kind of put these on pause for a while as we had heard so much about people just being burnt out and not having the um, energy, desire, capacity to attend them. So that's probably something we'll get in motion after OEN Engage and would love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, let's see here. And then, um, yeah, outlined here, we will also be creating more communications materials. Um, we got Tonya on the team who's amazing at designing those, um, uh, very creative. And so we'll, uh, capitalize on her creativity to, put some things together to support your local outreach efforts, um, as well as materials and training focused on engaging leaders and administration. And we're not super sure what that's going to look like at the moment, but that is um, at the top of our list to figure out. Uh, and then we will also be expanding, like I mentioned, with that workshop, the open pedagogy support that we offer. And particularly, you know, keeping that um, focus on open pedagogy as a tool to address issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the classroom. And then um, we're going to continue to identify and pilot tools that we can um, to support open education practices in general that can, again, kind of hopefully help make your work more efficient um, as we have kind of along the lines of the manifold pilot, for example. So um, stay tuned for more to come on that. And this is the time where we're going to turn it over to you. So let me stop the recording. <laughs>